Hey everyone, it's Rihanna and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be doing my March of What I've Watched video. Many films were watched, many TV shows were watched, and even a West End musical. I know, moving up in the world. This is like the third time I've tried to film this video, so hopefully this doesn't go downhill. Like, fingers crossed. So the first thing I watched in March was Greta Gerwig's Come Over Age Story, which is Lady Bird. This literally took about 84 years to come out in the UK. I was waiting to watch it for such a long time and I finally got to see it. Thankfully, I absolutely adored this film. I love the story, I love the characters, I love the character dynamics and just everything about it is just so real and just pure and wonderful. Saoirse Ronan was incredible as Lady Bird and Laurie Metcalf was amazing as the mum in the story. Everything about that film just touched me so much. Everything was just so relatable and I just cried and I laughed and it was just everything. Lady Bird was everything. I'm gonna pretend it won all of the Oscars and nobody else won anything. Like, it won every single one. Don't try and tell me different. So yeah, in conclusion, Lady Bird was everything. And if you haven't seen it, you've been living under a rock and you need to see it immediately. So please leave this video. We'll pause it, watch it, then come back. The first TV show I started watching in the month of March was actually Black Mirror. And this is a TV show I've been putting off since the dawn of time. Black Mirror is one of those TV shows where I think I don't want to watch it because I will end up having an ex existential, wow, that's a hard word to say, existential crisis after every episode. And I was right, but I'm still glad I started watching the show. Black Mirror is an anthology TV series. It's British, I believe, so go us. Uh, so basically every single episode is different. It's around an hour long and they each tell different stories with different characters. And oh my God, do they do it perfectly. It honestly amazes me how they managed to tell such in-depth creative stories in such a short period of time. My favourite episodes so far have to be White Bear and uh, the one in season one where they can record everything that they do. I also really loved Be Right Back from series two. I've only actually got as far as the last episode of series two. Uh, I can't binge watch Black Mirror. Like, I would literally turn into nothing, my brain would explode so hard that I just wouldn't be a person anymore. So yeah, I'm almost at the end of series two, I'm loving it so far. It's opened creative doors in my brain that I did not know I had, so thank you Charlie Brooker I guess. Thank you for making me want to have an existential crisis but also write like crazy at the same time. Next up I watched a film which was a complete surprise to me and that is Game Night and I'd heard a lot about this film from my friends in America who had already seen it before it came out in the UK and I'd heard it was like a genuinely funny comedy movie and those don't come out very often these days. So Game Night stars Rachel McAdams and Jason Bateman as a couple that get together with their friends who are in couples every so often for Game Night and the main character's brother comes into the picture and starts making things a little bit more complicated when he brings in this idea of a game where somebody is taken and they have to figure out what happened to them. And things just get a little bit too real. I was pleasantly surprised by Game Night. It was a genuinely funny comedy movie. It did go over the top at some points, but I kind of liked that. And I just love seeing Rachel McAdams in comedy movies. She is just hilarious. She has the best timing and anyone who thinks differently, I don't want to be your friend. Rachel McAdams in comedies is the best. Up next is a slight turn from Game Night and that is The Devil Wears Prada, which is slightly comedic but extremely dramatic. It's one of my all-time favourite drama films. It stars Meryl Streep, Emily Blunt and Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway is this aspiring journalist and she sort of gets wrapped into a job in a high-end fashion magazine and she learns all about the world of high fashion and it's just fabulous. Meryl Streep as Miranda Priestly is iconic, Emily Blunt as Emily is iconic, just everything in this film is just so iconic and great. I could literally go on for 12 years about how great Devil Wears Prada is, I will do it but this video can't be 12 years long, so we're gonna have to move on. Up next is actually a short film that I watched. It actually won the best live action short film at the Oscars this year, and that is The Silent Child. It tells the story of a little girl who is deaf and her family really don't pay attention to her. She doesn't really know what's going on. They don't try and communicate with her and she's not living 
the best life but her mother decides to bring in a helper and a carer for her daughter who teaches her sign language and helps her to communicate and it's a really touching story and it really helps to bring awareness to the importance of sign language. The film is extremely well done because every time we see the life of the character through the character's eyes everything is all silent and it's very very isolating but as soon as this helper comes in you sort of see her world widen and it's just excellently done. It was just a heartbreaking and heartwarming story. If you haven't been able to check out The Silent Child yet I definitely recommend it. Up next is a film I'm sure you all know that I loved and that is Annihilation. This actually came out on Netflix in the UK, it didn't get a cinema release which absolutely sucks because the visuals in this film are incredible. As I said I absolutely loved Annihilation, just some mind-blowing shit happened in that film. Natalie Portman was great, Gina Rodriguez was great, she was crazy good in the bear pig scene whatever. Just some really good sci-fi coming from Alex Garland. I just worship him now. It's just so good. Taking a complete 180 from Annihilation, the next film I watched was Love, Simon, which stars Nick Robinson as a guy in high school called Simon and he is closetedly gay. When his school blog reveals that there's actually another closeted gay kid in his school, they start exchanging emails and forming a relationship. And the story just tells the struggles of Simon with his friends and with his family and just the trials and tribulations of high school really and it just does it in such a great way. I love the fact that this is told through the perspective of an LGBT character in high school. We really do not see enough of that in the high school drama genre. It's just insane how few films out there tell that story you know. And Nick Robinson was just great, this film was just so cute and it was just one of those really really feel good films that just brings you a lot of emotion as well but Love, Simon was genuinely a great surprise to me. Moving on to a film that I already knew I was gonna love even though I hadn't seen it yet is Paddington 2. Now I absolutely adored the first Paddington film, I grew up with Paddington, I grew up with the cartoon TV show and with the books so obviously that little bear owns my heart. Paddington 2 was just so much fun, Hugh Grant was great as the villain, like he is a national British treasure, no word of a lie, and just Oh, it's just such a cute story. I love when films are not afraid to just have fun and be cute and just, you know, just be happy. That makes them happy and it makes me happy. Paddington 2 was charming as fuck, like so good. And my mum loved it, so that's obviously got to have extra points. Up next is a film I was so highly anticipating it was not even funny and that is Ready Player One directed by Steven Spielberg. I was lucky enough to see this film in advance and holy shit did I love it. If you want to know more of my thoughts on Ready Player One you can actually watch my review for it here. I don't want to go too much on about it because you've already probably watched that so don't want to repeat myself. Up next I gave a cheeky little rewatch to one of my favourites of 2016 and that is The Nice Guys starring Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe as a pair of misfit private investigators in Los Angeles in the time of the porn industry and it's just fabulous. If you haven't seen The Nice Guys just where have you been? It's genuinely one of the greatest comedy films in the last decade. Ryan Gosling is fantastic, Russell Crowe is fantastic, just the writing is so good. I'm saying so good a lot in this video but like a lot of things are so good. Something that was not so good was Pacific Rim Uprising. Now I had kind of low expectations for this one because I love the first Pacific Rim and the fact that Guillermo del Toro wasn't returning and Charlie Hunnam wasn't returning to the cast as Raleigh was sort of skeptical and the trailer made it worse because it just looked like Transformers and I hated it and I ended up genuinely not enjoying the film really. It's a blockbuster popcorn movie if you're into those but me and Maria from Cinecop Channel we saw this together while I was in Amsterdam. We weren't the biggest fans. Uh, you can check out our rant review here if you wish. I don't want to go on about it too much but it wasn't good. A film I'd been wanting to see for a very long time because I'd heard great things about it when it first came out was Girls Trip. Uh, I actually watched this again with Maria from Cineclub Channel and I genuinely liked it. I didn't love it, I didn't think it was incredible but I, I had a great time with it. I thought Tiffany Haddish was hilarious. I mean if Melissa McCarthy got an Oscar nomination for Bridesmaids then I need justice for Tiffany Haddish. She was 
fucking hilarious. Has some pretty good character dynamics, but it's a pretty bog standard story as well. But yeah, Girls Trip was a fun time. And of course, the first thing I did when I got back to England was obviously go to the cinema. And me and my friend had checked out A Wrinkle in Time, which I was actually pretty excited about because I love Ava DuVernay and the trailer looked really interesting, especially the visuals. And I can say it was okay. It could have been a lot better. The first half really drew me in, the second half not so much. So if you had no idea what A Wrinkle in Time was about, it's about this 12 year old girl named Meg whose father has been missing for the last four years and he was kind of a crazy scientist who wanted to bend the universe. And she is visited by three women, Mrs Who, Mrs Whatsit and Mrs Why? I believe that's it. Who tell Meg that they heard a call out in the universe who happened to be her father and the only one that can save him is Meg. So her and her little brother Charles Wallace and her friend Calvin go on an adventure through the universe to save her father. Now there were two very good positive things about A Wrinkle in Time. One was the main little actress Storm Reed. I thought she was so charming and just kept me in this story. And secondly was the visuals. This was a delight to my eyes. It looked so so great. And then you have the other side which are the downfalls which is basically most of the rest of the movie. Oh, I hate saying that. Well, when Reese Witherspoon turns basically into a human flying cabbage, I don't know where that leaves you. As I said, I loved the first half of the movie. The second half really, really lost me. It was very messy, could have been done a lot better. I still adore Ava DuVernay and can't wait to see what she does next. But I was a little bit disappointed in The Wrinkle in Time. Another cheeky little rewatch was a film from 2015, which I feel like I've slept on for the past three years, uh, is The Man From U.N.C.L.E., which I rewatched and just realised it was probably one of my favourites of 2015 and only just realised it. Army Hammer's hilarious, Henry Cavill's hilarious, Alicia Vikander's great, so stylish, the music's great. The Man From U.N.C.L.E. is just a treat to all of your senses because obviously you've got the eye candy, the visuals, the music, everything in between. It's just a hella good time. And God damn it, I want my sequel. I want like five sequels. I could literally watch Army Hammer do anything though. Moving on to my second of three TV shows, I got through season two of Jessica Jones, which I was super excited about. I really, really loved the first season. It had such a great story, such a great villain. Christian Ritter is great. And obviously I was super looking forward to season two because not only did I want to see the story continue, I was also super excited that they decided to hire only female directors to direct their episodes. I think that is so cool. And season two definitely focuses more on Jessica and how the experiments that happened to her affected her life, her PTSD and all of that. And the beginning of the season actually had a really cool story going on and I really was excited to see where it went. But towards the end I feel like the writers just didn't know where they were going with it and it felt like such an unsatisfying ending. I was pretty disappointed actually. I do hope they continue with the series but they just need to buck up their ideas I guess. Sorry Jessica Jones, Daredevil is still the best. Something I wasn't so disappointed in because it's Wes Anderson and I love him is the new stop motion animation I Love Dogs. Oh my god, I Love Dogs was everything I wanted and more. It's Wes Anderson and dogs, so obviously I loved it. It tells the story of a 12 year old boy called Atari who is in search of his lost dog spots. After all canines in Japan have been shipped to this place called Trash Island when a canine flu breaks out. And it's about this group of alpha dogs who help Atari search for his lost dog spots and it was just everything. It was adorable. The stop motion animation is just fucking incredible. Like I was watching it thinking, holy shit, this isn't real. This isn't the stop motion. This is actually real life. The score's great. The voice cast is absolutely fantastic. And it just looks so symmetrical and beautiful. Like if you haven't seen I Love Dogs yet, I highly recommend it. And also, I love dogs. See what I did there? That was rounding off my films. And to round off my TV shows, I watched season two of Santa Clarita Diet. And I'm so sad I watched it so quickly because season two was just hilarious. I absolutely loved season one. It was such an original idea and the main stars of the show are just hilarious and season two did not disappoint me in the slightest. I didn't even care about the plot. I didn't care about anything. Just these characters, their dynamic, the script is just so hilarious. So, so good. If you haven't checked out Santa Clarita Diet yet, you definitely need to. It's just one of my favorites. That was the TV shows, that was the movies. But I also got to see Hamilton on West End and it was just the best thing ever. 
I've been a fan of Hamilton for maybe three years now, like when it first started getting popular in 2015, and I've been waiting for so long to see it live on stage, and it was everything I wanted and more. The songs are incredible, the acting's incredible, the writing is incredible, like, if I can sum up in one word, it's incredible. I'm no theatre critic, but holy shit, like, Hamilton was everything. Like, I need to see it again five million more times. Plus one. Okay, that was an extremely long list, so thank you guys for hanging in there. And that was all I watched in the month of March. I hope you guys enjoyed. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought of what I watched and what have you guys been watching. I would love to know. And of course, if you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. As always, all my social media links are down below in the description if you want to come follow me. I am at Rihanna Toria on everything. And as always, thank you guys so, so much for watching. I'll see you very soon. Bye!